In the early hours of May 4th, 2000, as Hong Kong's financial district hummed to life, the first warnings began to surface. A simple love letter was spreading from computer to computer, inbox to inbox, continent to continent. By sunset, the most devastating computer virus in history would hold the digital world hostage, all because humans couldn't resist three simple words. I love you. Welcome back to Pinoy Pulse for part two of our story. If you like what we're doing, please consider hitting the like button, click on the bell icon, and subscribe. Let's get started. No one could have predicted how quickly it would spread. Following the sun westward, like a digital butterfly effect, the virus swept from Hong Kong to Europe and then to the United States as each region's workday began. Every opened email, every clicked attachment multiplied the infection, turning trusted colleagues into unwitting accomplices in what would become the most widespread cyber attack in history. What happened next was unlike anything the digital world had seen. Previous viruses had spread through networks like prudent invaders, infecting dozens, perhaps hundreds of computers. I love you moved like a tsunami. It didn't just infect networks, it overwhelmed them. Each infected computer became a new launcher, sending copies to every contact it could find. The spread of the virus soon grew exponentially. Picture the scene in London, the House of Commons, the heart of British democracy, grinding to a halt as love letters flooded its servers. In Washington, Pentagon officials watching helplessly as the virus breached their defenses, not with sophisticated cyber weapons, but with a simple promise of affection. At NASA, scientists realizing that irreplaceable research data was vanishing, replaced by copies of a love letter that was anything but loving. The virus walked through corporate firewalls like they were paper. Ford Motor Company, a titan of industry that had survived the Great Depression and two world wars, found itself paralyzed by a piece of code written in a manila apartment. American Telephone and Telegraph, which had built much of America's communications infrastructure, couldn't keep its own communication systems online. But the true devastation wasn't in the institutions. It was in the chaos that cascaded through human networks. Every person who opened the attachment trusted its sender. Every new infection betrayed that trust, turning friends into unwitting accomplices. Within 10 days, the numbers were staggering. 50 million infections, 10% of all internet-connected computers worldwide affected. The financial damage would eventually reach $10 billion. As the world reeled from the attack, attention turned to finding its creator. The trail led investigators to a small ISP in Manila called Sky Internet, which had been flooded with complaints from European computer users. Through careful investigation, they traced the virus to a cramped apartment in the Pandacan neighborhood. There, in the same city where students still pooled their money for internet access, sat the humble origin point of a virus that had brought the digital world to its knees. Back in Manila, as investigators closed in, De Guzman faced a reality far different from his idealistic vision. His experiment in digital equality had evolved into something he never intended. The virus that was meant to liberate had instead demonstrated how vulnerable our connected world had become. The legal aftermath proved as complex as the virus itself. The Philippines had no laws against creating malware. How could they? They were trying to prosecute a crime that hadn't existed when it was committed. His final public appearance was at a press conference where he wore dark sunglasses, covered his mouth with a handkerchief, and would only say, it is possible when asked if he created the virus. By the time new legislation passed, de Guzman had vanished into Manila's sprawling metropolis. For 20 years, the creator of I Love You remained a ghost in the digital machine. When a journalist finally found him in 2020, he wasn't living in luxury or working for a tech giant. Instead, he was repairing mobile phones in a small shop, still working with technology, but on a much more human scale. The irony wasn't lost on those who understood the story's full circle. The man who had once reached through screens to connect with millions was now connecting with people one broken phone at a time. The legacy of the I Love You virus is complex, 
a blend of unintended consequences and profound lessons. It wasn't just a piece of malicious code, it was a mirror reflecting our deepest vulnerabilities, not in our machines, but in ourselves. It showed how a simple message could exploit our innate desires for connection, affection, and belonging. In an age where technology races ahead, often outpacing our understanding of its impact, the story of I Love You is a testament to the dual-edged nature of innovation. It reminds us that every click, every interaction, is a bridge between human intent and technological action. The virus didn't just infiltrate computers, it wove itself into the fabric of human relationships, exploiting trust in ways we had never anticipated. As we navigate the ever-evolving digital landscape, the tale of the I Love You virus stands as a profound example of how technology can both unite and divide. It challenges us to reflect on the responsibilities that come with creation and connection. Because in the end, the most powerful forces aren't the ones we build with code or circuits. They're the timeless human emotions that can inspire both our greatest achievements and our most profound mistakes. Thank you for joining us on Pinoy Pulse. Remember to stay informed, stay vigilant, and continue asking the hard questions. Until next time, this is Pinoy Pulse, your source for in-depth stories that matter.